TeachAnOldDogNewTricks.com. More than 40 hours of free computer training, videos, and tutorials. Are you an old dog? Simply visit TeachAnOldDogNewTricks.com and learn some new tricks for free. Thank you. Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Hollowitz and I want to thank you for being here. Today's Microsoft Word tutorial is on grammar and spelling and as you see the very first sentence I have here is Tony's grammar and spelling tutorial. And I want you to observe that I have a lot of red squiggly lines under a number of the names or a number of the words I should say in this first sentence. So I want to talk to you about spelling and grammar. Now to a certain degree this is personal preference but the way Microsoft Word works is if you type or create a spelling error and sometimes grammar and spelling are sort of close in other words sometimes what you think is a grammar error Word will actually look at as a spelling error but typically spelling errors have a red squiggly line under them and I want you to observe right here we have a red squiggly line under Tony's also under grammar and also under spelling so it's telling me something is wrong so the first thing I want to do is take a look at how can we correct this. Now what you can do with Microsoft Word is you can come up on the toolbar right here where it says ABC and then it has a check mark and you can check your grammar. This will go every, th every it will go through everything in your document and check it. I honestly never use this. I just don't. So what happens is I typically will put my pointer on the item with the red squiggly or in some cases if it's bad grammar you'll see this in a minute a green squiggly line and I just typically right click on this word with bad grammar or bad spelling and what it's suggesting to me is here is the proper way this should be spelled it should be Tony's with an apostrophe so I'm gonna click on Tony's and go right there so what I did is again I right clicked and I'll come down to grammar which I've misspelled I'm gonna right click on that over here make some suggestions on what I might want to spell so I'm gonna click on grammar and correct that spelling again I misspelled it I'm gonna click on spelling so I right click on items to change them so the first thing I'm gonna do here with the word ain't is it's suggesting it's a misspelling so let's take a look at this I'm going to right click on it and what we're doing here is not so much a misspelling as much as it is a grammar issue. It's suggesting to me that the word shouldn't be ain't but it should be isn't. It isn't too bad, isn't it? Now obviously this is a really bad sentence and I set it up this way on purpose but let's go in and change it to isn't and see what happens. Now it's giving me a green squiggly line because now what that's telling me is that the grammar is bad. I'm going to right click on this and it's saying hey wait a minute the word isn't should maybe be is not it is not too bad isn't it so let's go change it to that and see what happens now it's taking this word isn't and it's saying we should change this as well I'm going to right click on this and it is not too bad be it now that sounds sort of weird to me but I'm gonna change it just for the sake of it and honestly I'm not sure that's correct but the point I'm trying to make here is not to give you the perfect sentence the point I'm trying to make is to show you that you have some grammar options here uh, it is not too bad be it now that's obviously wrong but I'm gonna leave it at that for right now again the point I'm trying to make is you can check spelling and grammar I'm gonna hit the space bar to get away from that and just take a look at it for what it is and move on. Next we have another sentence and this is a sentence that I stole from a website called writingtips.wordpress.com and I was looking for an example of bad grammar. Again here we have a green squiggly line so I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna suggest that it's one of these two. I'm just gonna pick the first one and again this is a sentence with pretty bad grammar but I'm gonna leave it at that so the point I'm trying to make here is that red squiggly lines are spelling green squiggly lines are grammar when you're using Microsoft Word what I like about it is a lot of times it can quickly and easily find mistakes and make you aware of different things that you need to address before you print something or send it out it's not a perfect tool it's just a tool to point out some things but again you have to use some common sense 
When I work with Microsoft Word, you can also be confused by it in a couple different ways. I'm going to come up here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to come right down here and I'm going to type in the word again or home again and I'm going to click away from it. Now what it's doing here, and this is something that I see periodically, that when you're working with spelling and grammar, sometimes you'll put something in, you'll look at it and say, wait a minute, that's not spelled right. But if we right click on it, what it's suggesting is that we've repeated that word. And if you've done any type of writing, we've all done it, we've put in a word twice. Well, Microsoft Word found that. So I'm going to click on delete repeated word. But let me go down to the bottom here and let me take this a step further. Actually, let me come right up here. I'm going to put a couple spaces in here. I'm going to come up and I'm going to type in my last name. What I'm going to do is, let me do the full name. I'm going to come in and misspell my last name. My last name only has one L. But let's say you have a client that has a name that's spelled somewhat uniquely. Maybe, for example, the last name of Smith. Let's say instead of just John Smith with what I would consider the typical spelling, S-M-I-T-H, let's say there's an extra H on the end of it. Well, let's say that is indeed the proper spelling of your client's last name, John Smith. Well, I'm going to right-click on the word Smith, and obviously it's suggesting to me that the proper spelling is Smith. But if indeed the proper spelling has two H's, what I have the option to do is come down here and add it to the dictionary. So in other words, if you have a name or something comes up with a red squiggly line, maybe it's a term or a scientific word or a product name, something very unique, and you use it all the time, well, instead of having to come up with a red squiggly line all the time, you can just simply take that word and add it to the dictionary. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add it to the dictionary. Hollowitz, I'm going to right-click on this, and you're going to see, I always get a kick out of this, it suggests hollowed. Sometimes in some versions of Word, it will suggest the proper spelling is half wits, which my kids always get a kick out of. But you can also add this to the dictionary. So any word that is not a misspelling, but is a unique word that is not recognized by Word, you can actually add it to the dictionary. So when you're working with spelling and grammar, you have a lot of options here. What we're going to look at in the future to, in a future tutorial is something called auto text and autocorrect and I'll show you can, how you can use those tools as well to do some things a little bit differently. When we work with Microsoft Word again it's not a perfect system spelling and grammar but it's not bad. Last thing I want to point out is if you go up to tools you go down to options and you check the spelling and grammar tab you have some options in here as to the way it checks your spelling and grammar. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this with the exception of saying go in and take a look at this. There's all kinds of different settings you can change. You can tell it what to check, what not to check, and you can also get very specific on the types of things it looks at. So if you find you're just getting too many errors, it might be you want to uncheck some of this stuff. My name is Tony Hollowitz. I want to thank you for being here for this tutorial on spelling and grammar. I always, when I teach this little tutorial, I always feel, feel that it's incomplete because, you know, there's just so, so many exceptions to English grammar that it's always difficult to be exact with it. But it's just a tool. Use it as such. And I hope you get something out of this tutorial. Thank you very much. My name is Tony Hollowitz. Have a great day.